The sheer brass neck of Berg getting 29 million views and making over $92,000 in the last 30 days just from ad revenue alone and then having the audacity to say that people are out to get him. Berg obviously doesn't like this one little bit because he stands to lose out on an awful lot of money which we will get into shortly. Was Dr. Berg lying about being censored? I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome back to another Dr. Westman Reacts video. One of the most widely viewed videos that I've ever done is the one that I responded to Dr. Berg's suspicion or, or observation actually that he was being put lower down on the search engine op optimization YouTube list and he is or was and, and was claiming that he was being censored or at least being prioritized would be another term to say it. Well, this view is something that I thought was reasonable, that if you search for the keto diet, one of the people who have the most keto videos of all time is Dr. Eric Berg. And now when you search, it doesn't come up, although other ones come up that aren't so favorable for keto diets. And the reason for that is the YouTube has decided to go with what the World Health Organization says is the right information to go out. I'm not quite sure how that process works, but for the keto diet, it means that people who have the largest number of views on the keto videos are not at the top of the list. Well, I was sent a video where someone reacts and it's Goji Man. I, I've reviewed some of Goji Man's videos before. I, I like his style, but he's pretty much, you know, anti keto and pro vegan in his bio. And so he did a video saying Dr. Berg is lying about being censored. And let's see what Goji Man has to say. The sheer brass neck of Berg getting 29 million views and making over $92,000 in the last 30 days just from ad revenue alone and then having the audacity to say that people are out to get him. Well, it's official. YouTube has just now banned anything related to health that doesn't align with the general medical consensus. Remember when this guy said he was being censored and then scammed his audience out of over a million dollars? Anyone else getting deja vu here? So if any information related to health doesn't agree with the World Health Organization, they won't necessarily always take down the, the video, but they're going to change the algorithms. So they're going to replace those videos that were popular, that had lots of likes and lots of engagement with medical information. This new partnership with YouTube is supposed to protect you against misinformation and promote high quality health information. For me, there is zero problem here and I welcome YouTube's tougher stance on health misinformation. Berg obviously doesn't like this one little bit because he stands to lose out on an awful lot of money, which we will get into shortly. Now, I don't understand personally why Berg is getting his knickers in such a twist about these new policies. The policies are aimed at bogus cancer treatments and things like using turpentine for the treatment of illnesses and diseases. <laughs> so hang on. Goji Man is using a technique here of wildly comparing a keto diet with turpentine for, for cancer. Or I remember being called out by Dr. Dean Ornish because he said, well, you can lose weight with the Atkins diet and you can lose weight with chemotherapy, making the false comparison, the insinuation that the Atkins diet was like giving chemotherapy. So I guess first, let me go back to the first accusation that Dr. Berg is doing this just to make money. Well, you know, money comes from lots of different sources and, and the idea that someone makes money from something that's useful and something that's helping people, well, doctors do that all the time. <laughs> I remember Dr. Atkins getting grief because he was making money from selling products and, and, and writing books. But when I visited his office in New York City, what they were telling me is that his office was losing money and he was basically supporting himself his doctor habit, 
his doctor world, uh, is practiced by all of these other other things. So if you're doing something that works, you if you're in the mainstream medical world, you do brain cancer, you do cardiothoracic surgery, you've trained for this, you make a lot of money actually in the medical world but it's in the proper channels, right? So, so to call out someone for making money about something is in the medical world or nutrition world thought to be unseemly or, or you're, you know, you're more into the business of it. Well, if it comes because it's, you're doing good, that's, that is actually an accepted medical practice to make money from doing good. And I, I had no idea that, that much money is made on ad revenue. I sort of have an inkling of how a little follow, followers, we make ad money from our site. And, and, you know, I'm, you have to ask our business team how much and it does grow, but we put it back into giving information back to people and creating courses for people to learn about something that is valid. So anyway, the false comparison. So the A, the insinuation that Dr. Berg is doing this just for money. I, I don't, I don't agree. And B, that this is like turpentine for cancer, the keto diet. That's, that's definitely not true. And the first textbook on therapeutic carbohydrate restriction or the keto diet came out last month. And maybe Goji Man, uh, I, I'd be happy to send you the, the yellow white textbook now on therapeutic carbohydrate restriction. There's a lot of evidence for it. It's not like turpentine for cancer. As a nutritionist, I see time and time again the harm that health misinformation can cause to people when they have poor health and they are at their most vulnerable to listening to information that at best is just wrong or at worst can cause serious damage to their health. So here, Goji Man, show me evidence that the keto diet is doing harm. This has been around now for, in my world, 25 years. The idea that, because that's when I started to study the low carb and keto diets, the idea that the Atkins diet was killing people and it's terrible misinformation. You, you have to show proof of that. Otherwise, it's just wild accusations. So because it's not mainstream, it's not something you learn in school, the use of a low carb keto diet is way ahead of the research, the, the use of it in the clinics by doctors who've used it for, for decades now. So you can't say that it's health inf misinformation unless you prove it. Just to not be in accordance with guidelines or what you were taught isn't sufficient. And their definition of misinformation is anything that opposes their viewpoint. I mean, if you go to drberg.com, you will see that I have 7,607 Success stories. You also have disciplinary action from the Board of Medicine for the violation of certain laws and for using ridiculous techniques such as body response technique. The body response technique involves holding vials of homeopathic solutions over acupuncture points. If muscles weaken, the vial is held over the point so that the body can absorb energy from it. Well, hang on. That has nothing to do with the keto diet, does it? And this is what we are dealing with here. I'm helping people. I'm giving people lots of non-toxic solutions. And if you just read the comments, you'll see that a lot of people are being helped. So my information is not dangerous. It's not misinformation. It's actually quite helpful. And this new change is gonna hurt a lot of people because they're not gonna be able to find alternative viewpoints, alternative opinions. Sometimes medicine doesn't work. And they're looking for inexpensive natural remedies to handle certain body issues. Yes, correct, medicine doesn't always work. But there are whole networks of lifestyle doctors, dietitians and nutritionists that people can turn to in their local areas if they are looking for alternative advice. And obviously if Dr. Berg is not spreading dangerous misinformation, then he has absolutely nothing to worry about. If he is not telling people to drink turpentine or that they can cure their cancer by going keto, then he doesn't breach YouTube guidelines and he won't have an issue. Well, actually that's not true. Goji Man, that YouTube is making this change just on the assumption that if it's not with the World Health Organization, it is like turpentine for cancer. So actually, Dr. Berg has something to worry about being number one on the list for so long that if he falls from number one, 
sure it's going to reduce views. And I don't fully understand how that the uh, search optimization works and what videos come. We're going to learn about that in just a minute. But if you're not number one on the list, the, the gosh, some of my patients will, will, will just click the first thing. And then in my office, someone clicked on my video and then watched the, read the top five comments and then thought, okay. And that was like the vetting process to be able to listen to me in the office. Yeah, this is a young young person who's starting to use YouTube as the screen through which whether they should know if they should trust me, which is, that's just, that is kind of crazy. I want to comment about the homeopathic diagnostic tool. I don't do that. I, I'm not trained in that. It's something some practitioners do and they swear by it. And some patients go there, they swear by it. Other patients say it doesn't work. So it's not, I, I don't agree with everything Dr. Berg says. And that's an interesting kind of interesting comment people have given back to me is that if you say you have go along with Dr. Berg's keto diet, then you're saying that everything, you agree with everything he says. No, that's not true. That's not the case. And I have no problem. I used to help invite people to meetings to, you know, where the, the meeting has 50 different speakers and every speaker is different and you don't have to agree with everything that they say to be able to invite people to their meeting. So I don't agree with everything Dr. Berg says, but the keto diet, which is my bailiwick, I do agree with what he's written about it. So using the homeopathic thing and the turpentine really are distractions from the main message that keto works. It is scientifically valid and it shouldn't be censored. But guess what? Now they're going to have a very difficult time finding those solutions because all these medical sites are going to replace alternative health. I mean, I used to rank for so many conditions. Now you can't even find me unless you type Dr. Berg slash whatever. And even on the keto diet, I have 928 keto videos. That's right, 928 videos. Guess what? When you type keto diet, you can't find me. And this is where Dr. Berg is knowingly lying to his audience. And let me explain this clearly. So YouTube has different traffic sources. YouTube search is where someone types keto diet into the search bar. And this accounts for very little views across the YouTube platform. Then you have browse and suggested views that account for 75% of all traffic on the platform. This means you watch a video on the keto diet and then you are suggested another video on the topic. In the last 30 days, Berg has received nearly 29 million views, making 75,000 pounds or around $92,000 in ad revenue alone. And let's look at his video views over time. In January 2021, he was getting around 2.9 million views per week. And in September 2023, he is getting around 6.6 .6 million views per week. So I asked you all this question, does this really sound like a channel that's being censored? Oh, dang. Funny thing, Goji Man, you know, this thing about time is you've criticized people for not addressing the comments below in their YouTube lecture, or that video of that day, because they haven't seen the video comments below. They already did the video. Comments come afterwards. Showing these views of Dr. Berg, the censorship just occurred. So now I, I guess what Goji Man, please do another one or, you know, if watch for the views over time for October, November, December and see if there's a, a downtrend in the views that Dr. Berg is getting because the, the time again, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it's going back to time when there wasn't any change in the YouTube policy or quote censorship or quote, just putting it down on the, uh, the list. Now, I'm not a big YouTube watcher. Actually, I have to say, Goji Man, I don't do what you say. So someone who's just watching YouTube instead of TV or other, other, other things in life might look at the second and third video. I basically go to the first video and I'm done. I, I typically get the information I need. I'm not following a whole lot of people to get their every day or every week uh, information. So the, the idea that it's gone from number one to down on the list to me is a huge 
reduction in, in, in probably in the views because not many people, if it is only 25%, still not, a lot of people won't go to watch that second suggested video. But I, I didn't know that's, that's how it works. That's an interesting process of how the videos are selected for you. But even then, you had to kind of search around to see Dr. Berg's stuff, even when it was on the side suggested video column. Again, the sheer brass neck of Berg of getting 29 million views and making $92,000 in the last 30 days just from ad revenue and then having the audacity to say that people are out to get him. <laughs> well, I, I think it wasn't it P.T. Barnum that, that said any, any publicity is, is good publicity, just get my name right, even if it was good or bad. I, you know, that point well taken that that the negativity will generate ads and ads generate rev revenue whether it's for or against you that that good point pipe down berg and forgive the internet if we don't give you any sympathy instead the f number one ranked video is from mayo clinic okay and the comments are turned off and you can see the likes are actually not very high compared to the number of views i think they have like 260,000 views, but very few likes. So that's interesting. I, I never really thought through the YouTube process, the, the idea that, you know, this is a way for anyone to get information out, to get through the filter of media or, or censorship or, or even YouTube <laughs> for that matter. And the idea that the more likes that you get, the higher it goes, the more views, the more it, you other people will see it. If you're starting to censor things and then you're putting, forcing videos against the keto diet to the top, the idea to look at how many likes there are and how many views and likes and, and the proportion of likes to views is an interesting way to look at the popularity of that. And certainly Dr. Berg has done a lot here to optimize his channel and get more views and to find one from the Mayo Clinic. Well, you'll read or hear this one. I went over it before. It's just, it's so misinformed and so biased against a keto diet. It's really sad that this is the first thing that comes up when someone fresh to learning about a keto diet learns about the keto diet. And it's an anti-keto video. And I'm gonna share some interesting things in that video. So this is the video that Berg is referring to, and these are all the videos that are suggested if people watch this video. So Mayo Clinic's video has 271,000 views, and oh, what's this? Dr. Berg's video titled Practical Keto is suggested with 9.7 million views. Oh, what's this? Keto Diet for Beginners, 4.9 million views. Well, so as again, not someone who uses YouTube all the time, I wouldn't necessarily look to see the number of views on the, the uh, videos in the sidebar. I'm, I'm learning a lot actually doing these videos. So if someone's new, and, and I guess it's the demographic that older people who are not sophisticated in their use of YouTube, you might just click that first thing, first video, and if it's anti-keto, you might stop. You, the, it's the younger folks who will quickly scan and see the views and, and, and that uh, may not be so powerful to restrict access to the high number of views until over time the views wane. Although the massive popularity of Dr. Berg's views uh, will they'll be at the top for a long time. And many other of Dr. Berg's videos that are being suggested alongside the video that Dr. Berg says is preventing him from being heard. Well, so I disagree. I think it does prevent or limit how someone's being heard if you're not at the top. If you're at the top, you're going to get most people to click on it and, and you'll have the most views and being down lower. So when you're used to being number one, to be number eight is a drop. And I, I am afraid Goji Man under appreciates that. To, if you're at the top, then any reduction is going to reduce your views probably. Although time will tell. I think another video should be done looking at the views that Dr. Berg gets in response to all of this when it shakes out over the next couple months. He also said that only anti-keto videos are being pushed. But wait a minute. Let's look at all of these pro-keto videos that are getting millions and millions of views. So again, Dr. Berg is talking out of his backside. But it's in the past. 
<laughs> I, I don't get this idea that time, it, it, these are views that have happened in the past before censorship. It, it's, that's kind of weird, Goji Man. You, you, you know, claim that someone is hiding something because they don't answer the, the views down below, the comments, because they haven't seen them yet. You call them out as being hiding something. Well, they haven't seen them yet. Here, the views are, are from the past before censorship. We don't know what's happened with censorship yet. So we actually don't know. I, I, I may have sympathy for, I may have sympathy for us if, if we end up going down on it. And I wonder if being at Duke University is going to keep me up there on the list. But even then, I, I, I don't know how that will work, how that will shake out. But I first want to, communicate a couple things. You know, a long time ago when Google started, they had this motto and that was do the right thing. And then they changed it to don't be evil. And now I don't even, I don't even know what, if they have a motto, but you think just giving people this one medical viewpoint, this monopoly over your body, your healthcare, you think that's going to increase the quality of health? I mean, basically this move is going to wipe out the competition. Again, 28 million views in the last month and $92,000 in ad revenue. This is without all of his supplement sales and everything else that he's raking in. I'll tell you what he sounds like. He sounds like tobacco companies when they realized they were done for. So they come out with all sorts of garbage to try and detract from the reality of the situation. So I've, I've seen that said and, and brought out so frequently about the, the motivation and the money. We're not talking much money here, Goji Man. <laughs> In the health system and to the health, the pharma money that's being made, this is trivial. So what can happen though is if one individual starts making money, that's a lot of money. But for a big company, this isn't much money, even though it seems like a lot of money to you. So the calling out these are ad hominem attacks when we're no longer talking about the credibility of the keto diet anymore. You're, you're calling out of the possibility or probability that, or yes, he's definitely trying to make money from this. And the keto diet is nothing but, you know, turpentine for cancer. And it, it's not turpentine for cancer. It's a scientifically based method. Uh, again, I'll, I'll send you the textbook. It's called Ketogenic. And the lead editor is Timothy Noakes in Cape Town, University of Cape Town in South Africa. And competition, competing viewpoints and opinions are very, very good in the healthcare field because it forces everyone to raise the bar and do better at getting results. And how do we trust this medical group with all the strategic alliances and the strategic partners, the strategic alliances with Big Pharma and how they partner with medical universities and medical journals? How do we trust that? Like I said before, their definition of misinformation is basically any information that opposes the medical viewpoint. The hypocrisy of this man is hysterical. He calls foul play on mainstream medicine for having conflicts of interest. Yet he sells every type of potion and lotion going. He sounds like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Medical consensus. How do we make sure they're transparent with all the conflict of interest, the strategic alliances and the strategic partners and what they call the stakeholders, which some of them are part of industry. And of course, the revolving doors with all the directors. It's terrible. It's terrible. And I think it's going to hurt a lot of people because freedom of health information is really freedom of speech. It really does sound like you have no freedom of speech with those 28 million views per month. It's a very slippery slope. <laughs> well, the more you start, uh, I, I don't know. I, I find the detractions a little bit, a little annoying. It, it's almost it's sour grapes for sure. And of course, someone with those that many views wants more views. Someone who, who, who a business that's making money, you want to make more money. That's what a business does. I have to just say, I don't use the products that Dr. Berg sells. And, but you know, what harm is coming of that? I, I don't think anything other than perhaps making your pocketbook a little smaller. The method I use uses real food and you get the vitamins and minerals, unless you're on some diet or, or some pre 
existing condition like bariatric surgery, that you're getting all of the vitamins and nutrients you need from the food that you eat if the food is high quality and you're cutting out all of the junk. So I don't uh, agree with selling all that stuff, but if someone is getting a benefit from it and the business is a business is to make more money, I don't, and it's in the healthcare field, and it, but it's something that it has some validity and science behind it. I, I, I think that's just sour grapes. And it's a very slippery slope. The more you start filtering out other opinions, other viewpoints, so many people go on the internet because they have not gotten results with certain types of medications and they're trying to find alternatives. So if someone wants something that's non-toxic, okay, or something that's natural, or a do-it-yourself remedy, that is all considered dangerous misinformation. No, dangerous misinformation is considered pushing things like turpentine. Yeah, it's just terrible. But it's not just me. It's all the other alternative healthcare practitioners, anyone who uh, comments on nutrition, even the layperson who wants to share their viewpoint on health, they're, they're not going to rank. And this doesn't just hurt me or them. It hurts the person trying to find the right knowledge. We're going to be pretty much stuck with just one way of treating the body. And they call this science. They call this high quality health information, really? Now, Dr. Berg is worried about losing hundreds of thousands of dollars per month, and he doesn't like it. And there's also a really interesting side comment that I read about this, uh, and they call it the silent epidemic. It's called health illiteracy. And some of these people that are writing about this give health illiteracy as the reason why people aren't going to the doctors as much and they're going online searching for alternative viewpoints on health. And this is what they defined health illiteracy. You ready for this? It's an inability to comprehend and use medical information. And they say this, it's worse with the elderly, poor people, and minorities. Sounds a little bit like discrimination to me. It sounds like you're a four-year-old child who can't get their own way and then is trying to throw his toys out of his pram. So basically they're saying that it's an epidemic out there. There's so many people who just can't understand medicine, right? And that's probably why they're going to alternative sites, you know, like things like that and not sticking with the credible high quality healthcare information. I mean, this is just ridiculous. I mean, maybe they don't understand it because the doctor is talking over their head or the information doesn't make sense. Or maybe they do really understand. They just don't agree with this idea of suppressing a symptom with a drug and being on the drug the rest of your life. To me, that's not science. I mean, even if you start looking up like pretty much almost every disease, psoriasis, MS, and if you look at the cause of this, it'll say unknown cause, unknown cause. We don't know what causes it. Well, if you don't know what causes it, what makes you the expert over that condition? You know? He's a chiropractor with no nutritional credentials, trying to claim that he's an expert. Well, that's interesting. So chiropractors actually have a different training than an MD or a DO, but chiropractors can be very helpful because they have a different point of view. And I've had experiences with chiropractors who actually do know about nutrition where the medical doctor doesn't. So that that's an interesting overgeneralization and, and judgment, Goji Man. Some chiropractors actually do know about nutrition. Yeah, but what really frustrates me is having them take over the keywords for the ketogenic diet. Now, why is that a bad thing? Because they don't have any experience in that area. Many times when doctors go to school, they don't get a lot of training in nutrition or anything alternative. And so now they get to be the controllers of that information as well. This next video that I'm going to show you is the video ranked number one for the ketogenic diet. Again, he knows very well that videos ranked in search get very little views compared to suggested views. This is why this video has a few hundred thousand views, while Berg's videos are getting millions and millions of views. Well, but that's in the past. <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. The the time thing that the that it doesn't have many views because it hasn't been number one for a while. Let let's see. You know, write down these numbers and let's see a month from now, two months from now, see what the changes in the views are to see to to back up the claim that it really isn't going to change much. Check this out. 
According to Dr. Google, <laughs> the most searched question of 2018 was, what is the keto diet? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, and this was even four years ago, keto is very popular. People are searching for it. The bottom line is the more people that get on this diet, the less medication they're going to need because it handles so many issues. And that statement right there is why YouTube has put its policies together. He is not qualified to make that statement and he has no idea over the longer term of the implications of people following his keto diet. So, sorry, <laughs> there used to be a, the gong show, remember that? The, the gong, no, actually Goji Man, there are lots of studies and a lot of clinical experience saying that yes, we can get people off medications using a keto diet. So that is not misinformation. It is in papers, it's in textbooks, and that this is getting a little bit out of uh, the reality of prove that harm is being done by Dr. Berg and or anyone promoting a keto diet because there, there may be an anecdote case study here and there, but the vast majority of people, I mean, any diet can harm someone occasionally, that, you know, a car accident, for example. Is that really the diet that does it? So the idea that proof of something causing harm has to be shown before action is taken on something like the keto diet, that would be a great thing to require. So that if you are going to put keto diet lower on the list and the positive ones lower on the list, you're going to have to show and explain transparently why you're saying that it's harmful. Not that it's just against a guideline or, or we all know the, that the World Health Organization has now been lobbied by the plant-based people to, be, to say plant-based is better and, and you know there's no study that says it is. So you're gonna see people gravitating toward that if you're following guidelines like that. Well, so if, if you like this one, I did a prior one on Dr. Berg's entire censorship method message. And, you know, I'm, I'm torn because I want information to be excellent out there. And I think the wrong people are being censored or, or put lower down on the list because the keto diet is valid and is evidence-based, even though you may not know it. Even though you haven't read the papers, there are organizations that endorse the use of keto diets, international organizations. So it might not be something that you're trained in. And I have to just finally say that if you have an armchair, always consider the source. If you have an armchair quarterback in the U.S., that's uh, the football, U.S. football, the quarterback is in charge, but you're in charge from your armchair, meaning you're always criticizing things. You don't have the street credibility or the, the experience that a doctor has one-on-one -on -one working with people. And so you want to, I think, listen to people who are in the clinic using a keto diet for your keto information, not someone who's going to be just criticizing it for some other agenda. But I, I, th I think it's useful to go over these videos because it, it shows typical responses that you see not only you know on these videos, but other people, friends, neighbors, relatives may come and give you grief about doing a low carb diet and, and explain it in these certain terms. Oh, they're in for the money, uh, the, there's no benefit from it, it causes harm. Well, no, actually it doesn't cause harm. And you know, if money comes from uh, an ex accepted way of selling things that help people in, in the medical establishment or outside, it's not causing harm. I, you know, I guess I've over the years become a little less judgy about that. No, you might not need the apple cider vinegar that Dr. Berg says you need to get, but at least it, it will draw you in and have you learn more about the keto diet program, which is doing the lion's share of the work for you in terms of healthfulness. Hope that's helpful. If you like it, please like the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on further episodes. And if you don't have my top 10 tips on how to start keto right, please look in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.